Sam Altman says that AGI is coming faster than we think and also gives us a slew of updated numbers about OpenAI. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Well, I fear that we may be having quite a bit of OpenAI talk coming up. Yesterday, Sam Altman tweeted, starting tomorrow, we are doing 12 days of OpenAI. Each weekday, we will have a live stream with a launcher demo, some big ones and some stocking stuffers. We've got some great stuff to share. Hope you enjoy. Merry Christmas. I'll come back in a minute to what people think might be coming from that. But where I actually want to start is with a really interesting conversation between Sam Altman and Andrew Ross Sorkin at the New York Times Dealbook Summit yesterday. There were a bunch of really fascinating parts of the conversation, including some new numbers for ChatGPT revealed, as well as maybe the most notable part, which is how Altman thinks about the coming of AGI. The TLDR is that Altman thinks that AGI is coming a lot faster than we think, but maybe less impactful than we think. He said, my guess is we will hit AGI sooner than most people in the world think, and it matters much less. AGI can get built, the world mostly goes on in mostly the same way, the economy grows faster, but then there is a long continuation from what we call AGI to what we call superintelligence. Last month, Altman said he believes his company will achieve AGI next year, and these comments suggest he thinks OpenAI is still on course. The big question, though, is how exactly does OpenAI and Altman define AGI? An early version of the company charter said AGI would be able to, quote, automate the great majority of intellectual labor. Now it seems that the definition is a little fuzzier and somewhat less. One of the reasons this matters is that OpenAI can end their deal with Microsoft once their board declares that AGI has been achieved. The Verge recently reported that the goal seems to be to combine the forthcoming Orion or GPT-5 model with the O1 reasoning model to create a more powerful model that can be labeled AGI. Adding more credence to the idea that Altman's definition of AGI is now more modest, he added, I expect the economic disruption to take a little longer than people think because there's a lot of inertia in society. So in the first couple of years, maybe not that much changes, and then maybe a lot changes in the economy. It may be that the civilization-changing AI which can end the need for human work is what Altman has been referring to now as superintelligence. Altman wrote back in September that superintelligence could be achieved within a few thousand days, a much less certain timeline. And notably, while Altman was optimistic that they're close, he did not give the impression that OpenAI has AGI waiting in the wings, almost ready to deploy. He said, there's a ton of hard work, a ton of research and engineering still to do, but I think it's possible. The other big topic from the interview was the prospect of political retribution from Elon Musk. So far, Musk has been fighting OpenAI in the courts, but there's a growing concern that he will use his newly found political influence to stifle Altman's plans. Discussing the prospect that Musk could send the force of the government against OpenAI, Altman said, I believe pretty strongly that Elon will do the right thing, and that it would be profoundly un-American to use political power to the degree that Elon would hurt competitors and advantage his own businesses. I don't think people would tolerate that, and I don't think Elon would do it. Altman also remarked that he was, quote, tremendously sad about the simmering tension between the pair of one-time co-founders, commenting, I grew up with Elon as like a mega hero. I thought what Elon was doing was absolutely incredible for the world at a time when most of the world was not thinking very ambitiously. He pushed a lot of people, me included, to think much more ambitiously. And I have different feelings about him now, but I'm glad he exists. Reflecting on what is driving Elon to go after OpenAI in this way, Altman seems to think it's purely about business rivalry, adding, he really cares about being the guy. He's a competitor, and we're doing well. There was also a lengthy discussion about the conversion of OpenAI into a for-profit company. Altman confirmed that the decision was made in part because Musk cut off funding, but didn't elaborate on the events that led to the situation. He denied reports that OpenAI had sought to block investors from also investing in rival companies. Altman also discussed his lack of equity in the company, stating, I wish I had taken some. Given how big all of this is, it almost passed without notice that ChatGPT usage has exploded. Altman claimed that the platform now sees 300 million weekly active users. Basically, the equivalent of a major portion of the entire United States is using ChatGPT every week. They're sending a billion messages daily, and 1.3 million developers in the U.S. alone are building on the platform. In the context of the abnormally fast scaling, Altman noted that the company requires far more compute than they had projected. And on the rumors that the relationship with Microsoft had become frosty, he admitted to some tension but said that the two companies were still pretty aligned in their incentives and are not in the middle of disentangling. One other interesting story around OpenAI that isn't about their ship miss, which was where we'll end this episode, the company has signed a partnership with Anduril Industries to build anti-drone defense systems. This is OpenAI's first time working with a commercial weapons manufacturer and comes a month after they first signaled their newfound willingness to work on military tech. The company still prohibits the use of its technology on offensive weapons, but has become increasingly comfortable contracting with the Defense Department on cybersecurity and administrative work. The current crop of Silicon Valley startups is undeniably more willing to view tech as an integral part of national defense and something they should be taking an active role in. Last month, Anthropic signed a deal with Palantir to provide their models for classified document analysis. 
Anduril's anti-drone systems are designed to track unmanned aircraft and then shut them down using electronic jamming, response drones, or other means. Anduril said that OpenAI's tech could improve accuracy and reduce the time to detection and response, putting fewer people in harm's way. Pretty interesting one that I think says a lot about the shifting mood of Silicon Valley. Lastly, let's talk about 12 days of shipmas. An announcement tweet promised 12 daily live streams and a bunch of new things big and small. The Verge reported that the stocking stuffers will include an assortment of new features, products, and demos. And sources say that the big reveals will be a new reasoning model and the long-awaited release of the text-to-video model Sora. It seems that some ship cheer will also be brought to the company's existing products. AI news aggregator B. Tibor found code enabling a new Christmas edition voice for ChatGPT, complete with a snowflake symbol to activate voice mode. Tibor is referring to it as Santa GPT, so perhaps you'll be able to chat with OpenAI's version of Jolly Old Saint Nick. For what it's worth, this is something that I have already done with my kids, asking one of ChatGPT's existing voices to imitate Santa to announce as we turned on our holiday lights. Overall, the team at OpenAI seems to be very excited about this. Chief Product Officer Kevin Wheel tweeted, This is going to be wild and crazy and a lot of fun. Shipmas is coming. Investor Vinod Kosla wrote, Excited for OpenAI's 12 days of Shipmas. The AI world will again feel different by the new year. We, of course, got a bunch of predictions. Data scientist Diego wrote, Day 1, launch of Sora. Day 2, introduction of a Santa-inspired voice for ChatGPT. Day 3, enhancement of ChatGPT's advanced voice mode with vision. And then he went on to make a bunch of predictions as well. One small one, which would be big, would be a new DALI model. To the extent that there is any skepticism, it's that some think that if the announcements aren't really big, this is all going to feel like a bit of a wet blanket. Lisano Gabe writes, I think I'm speaking for most AI nerds when I say, if OpenAI doesn't release GPT 4.5 or demo GPT 5, this 12-day event will be a huge waste of time and could really screw OpenAI's public perception. We already know that Sora 01 price cuts in AVM are coming because you promised us months ago. Give us a Christmas surprise or pack your stuff. If you make all this hype and don't deliver, I think as an investor, I would rather bet my chips on Claude, Gemini, Grok, DeepSeek, and Quen. For my part, I do not think we're going to see GPT 4.5 or GPT 5. Allman has been pretty clear that that is not coming this year. However, I think a lot of people will be pretty excited if Sora actually comes to bear. And as for the rest of it, well, we'll just have to wait and see. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.